Welcome back. For anyone uneasy at the thought of their body being burned or buried after they die, a new option is coming to the UK later this year. It's known as water cremation. The so-called, forgive me for the phrase, boil-in-the-bag funeral involves dissolving a body in 160-degree water with a carbon footprint that's half that of a gas-fired cremation. Joining me now to discuss is Poppy Mardell, the founder of Poppy's Funerals, and author Ross Clark, who's uh, Associate Director of the Church Society. Let's start with Poppy. Hi, Poppy. Great to have you on board. Um, how, how much do you know about these, forgive me using the phrase, boil in the bag funerals? I know quite a lot. Um, resumation or alkaline hydrolysis or water cremation, as it's known, is one of a number of more sustainable choices that hopefully will be practiced in the UK soon. We do mm. need to find um, choices for our bodies that have a lower carbon footprint and that um, continue to be affordable to people when someone dies. How would it actually work? I mean, let's assume that someone passes away, you love them very much, you've heard of this, you think it's a good idea, you'd like it to happen. Where would it happen and how would it happen? I'm finding it hard to sort of imagine, the whole thing. we're familiar with burials, obviously, familiar with cremations, not so familiar with this. I don't know what the sort of technical details are of how it all would transpire. It might be easiest to think of it a bit like a cremation because um, the the vessel you're showing is not that different to what happens when we're cremated. Um, so the process before uh, the water cremation would be very much like any other funeral. So you could have a ceremony, um, you could do all the things that you normally do when someone dies, spend time with the person, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And then the funeral director that you're working with after the funeral would transport the person to the facility. So that facility might be on site at the funeral directors, or it might be um, at the local, lo there's every chance that the local authority will uh, start to provide this service alongside cremation. Right. Um, and then the person is put in uh, what the organization describes as a bio pouch. So it's a biodegradable pouch. Um, and then you're put inside this vessel and then the process begins. So it is actually not that different to cremation. And, and does the pouch get reused and reused? No, the pouch is the pouch biodegrades. Yeah, so the, so that 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 would stay with you. And I and I have read about this. I've kind of had to today. And 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 it seems that the body pretty much dissolves, but the bones don't. The bones remain, but they're thoroughly softened by the process, and then they can easily be turned into powdery dust, which can be given to the family in an urn or whatever kind of vessel they want to get it in. So it's a little like having the remains after a cremation. They're sort of a bit different, but more or less the same. Is that right? Yeah, exactly right. And so that's very much like cremation too. So when someone is cremated, um, your bones are, your bone fragments are left at the end of the cremation. And then those bone fragments are reduced to, a, to the powder that we know as ash. Mm. And so it's a very similar process um, with this. I think that one of the interesting things looking at the news today is this sort of language, the boil in the bag language. It's, it's interesting to think that when cremation was legalized over 120 years ago, there was just the same fear and um, euphemism. And I, I would sort of call on us all to try and dig deep and, and, and try and be sort of like grown up in our approach because we do need to find new sustainable choices. And it's not that different from cremation. Tell me what happens if we don't. What's happening in terms of actual old fashioned burials? Because I remember you and I, Poppy, many times discussing this kind of thing on the BBC. And mm. I think people were, were somewhat amazed to find that 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 the, the sh shortage of space was so acute that people were sometimes being buried on top of each other, on top of each other, on top of each other, on top of each other. So you think you're buying a funeral plot that's for yours in perpetuity, but actually there are a whole lot of other strangers already buried in the very same plot. And I'm not exaggerating, am I? Well, I think the issue is, when you think about it practically, again, I think one of the problems is that we hold death at arm's length and we don't think very practically. When you think practically, we live on an island, there is only so much land, so we can't all be buried and stay in the ground forever. Um, so there's another there's another piece of work that needs to be done, I think, to encourage what you're describing, but in a very respectful way, which is reuse of graves. So it's the idea that we don't get buried in the ground for an ever, forever and ever and ever, but that we go into the ground to turn into soil and that then we make space for other people. So I think it, it's all very challenging, this stuff. I don't underestimate how challenging it is to our minds. But when you start to think about it practically, we do need to come up with, I think, a number of solutions for the future. 
Um, the issue with cremation, obviously, is it's burning of a fossil fuel. So you use gas to um, cremate people, and that is not, not at all good for the planet. Mm -hmm. And so what do you find in terms of requests and popularity among those people that you are burying recently, Poppy? What, what are families asking for? What are they most concerned about? Or do they really just want the traditional funeral with a burial in a country churchyard kind of thing? I think um, I've always been struck by this work. I've been doing this now for over 10 years, that I think you cannot... Um, compartmentalise people. I think there was this idea of sort of traditional funeral and modern funeral. And my experience is that every family and every community, they want a personal experience. And so for most people, what that means is um, some traditional aspects, something very personal. So I'm thinking of a family we supported recently who was a chef and they had a pretty traditional funeral, but they wanted the chef's hat on top of the coffin throughout. Um, we, we hear more and more from people who are concerned about... Um, their legacy on on the planet precisely so caring about the choices that are made and wanting to them to be as environmentally friendly as possible and one of the issues that we have is whilst you can have um environmentally friendly coffins and you can use electric vehicles uh, we still are in this position in this country where burial and cremation are our only only choices natural burial is very good for the planet but not accessible to everyone so we do need these new processes like water cremation like human composting, which isn't currently legal in the UK, but I really hope will be soon, and grave reuse to make sure we have lots and lots of choices on the table when people want to make a good choice for the planet. OK, I'm just going to ask you, obviously, you know I'm going to about human composting before I go to Roz, who's waited very patiently. Just tell me what human composting, which you've prefaced, is not legal in this country. What is it? Where do they do it? They do it in America. Uh -huh. There's an amazing company that I would highly recommend looking up called Recompose in Seattle. Um, it's legal, I think, in six or seven states now. So basically the body um, is put in a similar vessel. They're all similar bits of equipment um, with some natural substances. So straw, alfalfa, wood chips. And over a period of about 45 days with no um, heating or any kind of uh, invasive processes, our body basically turns to soil. So it's for the gardeners out there. Uh, it's an amazing choice. And, I, and we, we are on a planet that needs soil. We need good soil. So... Um, yeah, not, it's not illegal in this country. We don't have many laws around what's possible, uh, but it's not currently practised and um, hopefully it will be soon. Will we need a change in the law for water cremation to become legal? We won't need a change in the law. Poppy, thank you so much. Let me go to Ros. Ros, you've been listening to all of this. Do you, do you eagerly await the advent of water cremations or boil-in-the-bag uh, burials in this country? Do you think that will be a good thing? I mean, like you, Vanessa, I've been reading up on this today. It wasn't something that I previously knew an awful lot about. And obviously, Poppy's right. We do have to think very carefully about what do we do with bodies? People do always die. That is a, a reality of life. And we do need to think about what are the appropriate ways of dealing with people uh, and their bodies after they die. One of the things I was really encouraged uh, to hear her speak about, and so often funeral directors are the people who do this really well, is to talk about the person. Even after they've died, that is a person. The body is a part of who that person is and who that person was. And I think more than worrying about the processes, which we put uh, somebody's body through after death. We need to think about the way in which we do that, that shows appropriate respect and care for the person who's involved. So one way, for example, is to keep referring to them as a person, um, to think about uh, how we are explaining and presenting what might happen to the family, to the loved ones. But there is a reality. Bodies are physical. Bodies are biodegradable, bodies are made of the same stuff as the rest of the world. We're made of the same kinds of atoms and molecules and chemicals. And whether a body is buried or cremated or goes through this water process, the same thing eventually will happen, that we will disintegrate and we will decay. For us as Christians, um, the thing that's very important to remember is that a person is not only a body, their body is part of them and should therefore be treated with respect, with dignity, with honour. But it's not the whole of a person. Um, and certainly I believe that uh, we will one day be restored physically and spiritually, body and soul together. And so that's why when Christianity uh, became the dominant religion, 
uh, we did move from a society that used to focus on cremation to one that focused on burial as a way of honouring and respecting that that body has an ongoing future. Now, I don't think it depends on us using burial. I don't think it matters precisely what method uh, we use. But it's important that we're able to show people that our existence is body and soul, a physical body and an ongoing soul to give people hope beyond death. Ros, thank you very much. And Poppy, thank you.